Aloha! We're here in Honolulu, Hawaii for the Plant Biology 17 Annual Conference. I'm your host, Risha Masalia, and we're Between the Palms. Welcome to another episode of Between the Palms. I'm here with Maya. And Maya, can you please tell us about the research you do at the University of Iraq? So we are interested in how um, patterning occurs, so in development. And um, you have to think about that obviously all life starts with after fertilization with a single cell. And then from that single cell, uh, through a number of really complex processes, you get different organs being formed and different tissues being formed. And we're interested in how this comes together in, in the actual reproducible manner that we see this happening. And so our focus particularly is on how a leaf attains its shape. And so we're looking at how, uh, specifically how the top and the bottom of the leaf becomes distinguished and uh, this then has uh, two consequences. One, that the leaf grows out as a flat surface. Okay. And the other one, that you get distinct cell types on the top surface versus the bottom surface. Interesting. So and it's not necessarily leaf shape, it's just um, top versus bottom and the, and the physiological responses that come with, that, with both of those. No, also shape in a way, okay. because not in a way, actually, shape is actually the major thing that we're after, because when in a leaf, when it initiates, it's a small bulge, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't specify this top and bottom, it will grow out like a rod. Okay. So, and the specification of top and bottom, the first thing it will do is is, is drive actually that there is a flattened outgrowth of, of, of the leaf blade. Okay. And then the differentiation of these distinct cell types is something that happens quite late in development, uh, and that's a secondary consequence of, uh, yeah. Nice. So, in terms of patterning and, and leaf development, what do you believe is the next you know, hot topic or the next big thing in your field? I think in development in general, what people are now beginning to do is, is um, really looking at things in, in real life. So, when um, I first started in this field, the emphasis was on finding genes. So, people okay. would do mutant screens to find genes that would be involved in a particular developmental process, whether right. it's flower development or leaf right. development pick, or something. Pick your favorite trait. And exactly. Right, okay. And then mutagenesis and try to identify as many players right. in the process as you could. Okay. And then we moved on to sort of getting an understanding of, of how they, these genes tie together, where they're expressed and things, but it was always a static picture. Right. And now with the new tools that we have, we can actually start looking at things really live on a growing organism. So we can follow how these genes behave and, and where they're expressed and how their expression changes on the actual growing organism. Is this not only in terms of uh, like a dynamic in terms of time, but also in terms of like spatial yes. like locations as well? Yes, yes, okay. yes, both. Okay. And then also in, in many cases, this is really done on a quantitative level. Right. And so you can then take all that information and yeah, really get a dynamic view of how things are developing and, and also then the quantitative manner allows you to build mathematical models. So you can predict future... Exactly. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah. And that's probably, you know, this will take us still a while to... A lot of these tools, imaging tools are being developed and that, that's, that's where the field is going to go. We're going to have a descriptive, quantitative description of how. Right. So essentially uh, just imaging tools and processing more data on a large scale to get a more holistic or realistic view of what's happening in real time. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what uh, crop species or what species in general do you work on? Is it Arabidopsis only or is it different crops or, or other wild species? I came 
Um, I entered into developmental biology by working on maize. Okay. And we still do things in maize and that, that for us had been tremendously powerful actually because from a lot of the mutagenesis screens mm -hmm. then we identified a number of really important players in, in the specification of top bottom identity. And what was different about this is that the mutants we characterized in maize were different from what people were finding in, for this process at least, finding in Arabidopsis or in other mm, okay. you know, plant models. Mm -hmm. And so we still do a lot of work in maize, yes. and it has certain advantages. Mm -hmm. But then we also moved into Arabidopsis because of the advantages that Arabidopsis offers, obviously. Right. It's easily transformed. Small genome it's, size, it's, yeah. everybody works on it, so you have a lot of information to yeah, figure yeah. out. Of. And a lot of these imaging techniques work well on the small Small structures of, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the small, tiny plants, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. And then we have done some work in moss, and that is really because we wanted to find out uh, these processes are conserved across land plant evolution, okay. and indeed are conserved in, in mosses, even though mosses don't really have true leaves, and mosses right. don't really have the, the same you're, you're structural... Finding, right, and um, you're still finding them. Yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. Um, so, one of the questions I love to ask uh, scientists is how you became involved or how you became infatuated with plants. Uh -huh. So, you can, can you talk, give us a little bit about your backstory and how you became a plant biologist? I, I did not set out to become a plant biologist. Really? Okay. No. I feel so like the answer that most plant biologists give are the opposite. They've always loved plants forever and ever and that's, they always knew that they wanted to be a plant. But no, no. So I, ca I came it on it uh, from a very different, uh, different angle, and I am very happy with the decision that I made. <laughs> but okay. I didn't actually have this sort of like I want to do plant right. biology. I think I came in. Um, first of all, I wasn't even clear that I wanted to be a scientist until really? later. Interesting. Yes. We'll, we'll circle back to that. Yeah, we'll circle back to that. So, <laughs> but in the end, I, I got a biology degree. I worked for a number of years in. In uh, initially in uh, a microbiology area, okay. and then I moved on and worked on questions related to uh, eye development and crystallines in in the eye. So this was actually in mouse. Okay. And after having done both these things, uh, I entered then at a rather late stage. I entered in my PhD, and I had to make a decision, sort of what direction I wanted to go and. I knew from working on both of these things that I wanted to work on genetics and problems that affected things on an organismal level and not okay. on a cellular level. Okay. So I wanted to, re and this is where the development ultimately right. came in, right? Yeah. So, and I think uh, plants was then one possibility, and at that time, plant development was just an up and coming field. Mm. And so it offered great opportunities and, and lots to be discovered. And I think that was sort of the thing. It's like, let me just go just for go it. Go for it and try it. Just go for it. Did you, was it. did you love it immediately, or was it, ah, oh, this is new, I need time to kind of adjust and get used to this after mouse work? Yeah, no, but I did like that a okay. lot. I, I liked it actually fairly Im immediately. immediately. And I, I liked the, you know, at that time indeed I was doing maize, right? Mm -hmm. I, I really loved being in the field, looking at plants, you know, going to the greenhouse, looking in these mutant screens, looking right. for plants that look different. And um, yeah, there was a lot to be discovered, actually. We didn't really know anything about this. Right. And it was very exciting. So you got the joy of discovery with with a new yeah. field of plant biology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So circling back to what you had said earlier that you didn't know you wanted to be a scientist in general, uh, what did you want to be when you were growing up? I wanted to be a detective. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. So, I but but to be a I isn't I guess being a scientist is like being a de detective, right? You get yeah. the joy of discovering new things and, and yeah. problem solving. Yeah. Problem solving and sort of applying logic to indeed problem solving. Right. So it is actually very yeah, I think what appealed me to the detective being the detective came out of obviously children's books, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but that idea was probably very naive. But <laughs> Uh, but w what appealed me to that is indeed it's exactly is what I mean, what we do in science. So mm -hmm. it, it it makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah. The the career path. Yeah, absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much. This was uh, another episode of Between the Palms, and we'll see you next time.